Unity Church of El Cajon welcomes you. Thank you for joining us for Transformational Tuesday. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. My name is Becky Rokel, and I'm here with the lovely ladies. And I am going to talk to you today about a book called The Call to the Chosen. So let's start with prayer, shall we? Father, Mother, God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the words of wisdom that come from these lovely ladies. For all those listening, for all those that leave comments, for all those people that we touch their hearts with your words and your wisdom. We are so grateful for this time and the treasures and talents of everybody here. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. I want to talk to you about this book. Let me see if I can show it to the call and the chosen. This is a book I've had for quite some time. And chapter four talks about winning the rebels through love. And I won't read you the whole premise here. Es essentially what this chapter is talking about is if God needed to solve the problem, if God needs to solve a problem, he does. But when he wants to win them through love, the rebels, the people that aren't coming to God, he sends out his chosen, which I believe are the people that will listen. It's not like God goes, oh, I choose you and I choose you and I choose you like we're gifted with something. It's the ones that got down on their knees and said, okay, God, I'm listening and, and responded to his patiently waiting at least for me, he was patiently waiting for a long time for me to say, all right, I've had enough. Here I am. What do you want from me? And in this chapter, it talks about how these chosen, whether he chose us or just patiently waited for us and we chose him. I finally woke up one day and said, oh, yeah, there is a God. And yeah, he does love me. Um, through us, we go to others that are like we used to be. And we, we are the God, like Linda said it before, we may be the only Bible someone ever sees. So it's the people that are willing to be that Bible out in the world, out in the community, over the phone, um, in a prayer circle, in whatever way we're willing to show up at an orphanage, at a meeting. I mean, all of us do these things, right? And I believe that we're chosen because of the people that we can reach. It's because not everybody that knows me and can hear me speak can know or hear Linda or can know or hear Nancy or know or hear Rev Deb. We all have, one of my teachers told me years ago, every voice has an audience. And I believe that that's us. And for, for God's voice, for God's understanding, these people see us, they know us, they resonate with us. Have you ever been, gone somewhere and you're like, oh, that's my people. Even though you know they're doing stuff, you're like, oh yeah, I used to do that. But it's like, I, I'm drawn to them because I know their pain, because I know what they've been through. And I know they can choose again because God patiently waited for me. And now I give me a face of God for them and so that's kind of what it's talking about taking the face of god which is our understanding of what god wants us to be in the world and walking every day on the path and projecting that so that others can go ah there's that light i've just been waiting for that one message somebody said i know you guys have experienced this you ever gone and given a talk and when you're done, someone comes up afterwards and said, you know, when you said this, blah, 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 but you know, you didn't say it, mm -hmm. you know, those were not the words that you would said. It's like that, that whole connection is made because we're chosen and we're willing and we accept that to, to, to be able to, they could hear it through us. And that what, that's what brings them further on their path. And when they know more, they do better and we change lives and then they become a path for someone else. So that was my little spiel about it. What do you guys think about that and or whatever else you want to talk about? I'll share. I, I agree with you. I, I don't know if I'll speak directly 
to all your comments, but I know I make a difference in the world and I don't know how. And someone can come and visit that I haven't seen in 10 years and they'll say, I remember when you said so-and-so and I'm like, did I say that? Wow, they remembered that. And we are those angels that God uses in special moments. And we never know who we touch and how we touch them. And it's so beautiful when we do hear. I met with a gentleman Monday evening at a dinner. I was at with six people and I shared about the orphanage. And, and for a moment, he looked down and he had this look I couldn't figure out. But then I met him today for lunch to talk more about the orphanage. And he said, when you made that comment that you go inward to source and you tell God, you will do this. And this is what I need from you, source. I need you to bring me all the right people and the funding in the perfect divine timing. And I'll keep walking towards it. And he said, when I heard you say that, I knew that was your purpose and passion. And I'm just waiting for mine. And you reminded me of my dream for an orphanage. So we spent lunch today talking about his dream for an orphanage. And he has a simpler way than I've heard so far. So it's like all the right people are coming at the right time. And to be patient and trust. And you never know when you say one word that sparks that person's purpose and passion. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing, letting me share. Anytime that we reach out to connect with another, we don't evidently always know what they need. But as we are in prayer, we go to source and God knows what that person needs. And we do not need to know, but we pray that whatever is to come to whatever is to be manifested, whatever is to unfold, that it will come under divine timing and in the right way with the right people. And just as you all said, it's what we are aware of, what we know as the truth, and we know that as we say it, we know that it is true. And so we are so grateful that we are in this and that we pray for each and every situation. And thank you for this topic. Okay, so I, I may be the unpopular one in, in this topic. Um, I know that each and every one of us is called <clears throat> that you know God's only got one kid and it's us and and the call goes out throughout humanity throughout mankind serve God and for as many reasons as there are people the answer isn't isn't made yeah okay later I'm not listening whatever and and that I believe <clears throat> anybody everybody can answer the call to serve God, to growing consciousness, <clears throat> to serve the truth and learn the truth. <clears throat> and I know I resisted answering that call for a long, long time. <clears throat> you know, I spent almost two decades being a drug and alcohol counselor. And people would come to me all the time and say, thank you, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I'd never get clean. <clears throat> and that's so wrong because I couldn't do it for them. If I could do it for you, <clears throat> that it would be done. I, I would do it for everyone. I would joyously do it for, for all people, but that's not my path. It's not my journey. What happens is, and we've heard this, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And, and it's who 
answers the call near you when you're ready is the one that that grows with you and shares your path as as you move forward so i am so honored to have shared a path with so many amazing miraculous people but i don't believe for a second that if i'd said no somebody else wouldn't have stepped up and done it um i think i get so much more out of serving than anybody who I might be able to help on the path. The gift is serving God, not helping you or you or you. It's it's serving God and that people are are helped in this and led in this and healed in this and hopefully motivated to answer their own calls in this. It's just a beautiful part of, of the process. So a little different event. And if there are no more comments, I'd like to invite us to take these thoughts a little bit deeper. I invite you to settle yourself, take a breath, and know that you are safe. This is a safe place. This is a sacred place. As we breathe together and turn within and share spirit, love, wisdom, we know that it's okay to say yes. Yes, God, we hear you. Yes, God, we answer you. Yes, God, we open to you. Show us your will. Show us our part. Show us each step on the path. And we say yes. Breathe that in. Yes. I invite you to return your attention to the here and now. And I'd like to thank all of our viewers for watching and being a part of our program of our day. I hope that you will share this video with anyone that you think would benefit from it. The more people who see it, it helps us, it helps them, and it helps you. Please like our video if you're not a subscriber yet. Do subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for being with us. Please share your comments. We want to hear you just as much, if not more, than you want to hear us. And tune in tomorrow for something completely different. God bless. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our chat. Be sure to comment, like, and share with others. Blessings.